Hi everyone, can you believe that it has been 12 months since we published our video series? Over the past year, you have been sharing with us the experience that you have been through, whether it's business recovery, burnout, talent crunch, how you navigate through challenge after challenge to bring you into 2023 and preparing you for 2024. So we are bringing the video series back, starting with an all important topic, balance. We'll be speaking to leaders across Asia Pacific who will be sharing with you how they strike a balance, maintain mental fitness, and thrive in a challenging business world. Ruth, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. We've talked a lot about you know, how the industry has gone through uh, an amazing, incredible 18 months because events are back, yes. but yet at the same time, we are almost some of our industry friends are almost too afraid to say that oh my god it's such a it's been such a burnout experience but what i want to know is how how do you make sense of the past 18 months thanks al i think the last 18 months is just the tip of the iceberg because the roller coaster of the last three years with covid and the massive adaptation to embracing tech and considering client needs was just so varied and none of us were particularly prepared for that um, it gave us a lot of opportunity to reflect and really create some new changes in response to what the market was asking really. So listening to the clients around how do they bring more inclusion, um, wider reach to more customers with reduced budgets and also the ongoing conversation which is becoming more increasingly important about sustainability mm. has been huge. So. 18 months sort of really saw a massive influx back to in-person events and that real craving of we must get together. Um, but there were so many learnings and so many great opportunities to move forward with opportunities for tech and bringing in more people from wider regions where they wouldn't normally get invited to events because either firstly the companies wouldn't be able to afford to send them um, but they were just too far to come. Um, so, for example, doing product launches, reaching people in a wider region or include, being more inclusive of staff it really brought a stronger cultural opportunity and more opportunity to, for people to engage in person in sessions more so than ever before. Mm. So fascinating times. Very, very fascinating and you know, also incredibly exciting. Yeah. If you were to relive the past 18 months, what advice would you, knowing what you know now, what yes. advice would you have for yourself? Oh, well, I was really lucky because my business partner had 25 years in satellite TV production prior, so we were very easy to adapt to the changing times, but nonetheless, it certainly had a lot of uh, uh, tumultuous times and feelings and anxiety around how to adapt, and also the confidence to know that things were going to come back to probably the way we were doing things like conferences and incentive programs and really bringing that true essence of discovering the world. Um, really just looking at how we could really stop and pause and know that that would come back, but also on how to embrace and reflect on that there were new ways to look at how advances in technology um, to really ease our way into that and see it as something that can still be ongoing and very dynamic as well as coming back to rest together in person and motivate each other in person as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, I think uh, just easing my way and not being overwhelmed by so much change in a very short period of time, um, really taking time to regroup and probably include some more meditation and <laughs> exercise along the way. <laughs> yes, yep. balance, yes. it's really about balance. Yeah. So, you know, you are a successful business person a great mentor to your team that I know for sure yeah <laughs> as well as a loving mother so yes. you've got so much you know we're always juggling mm. everyone right and yeah. so how do you define balance for you well I um, I'm lucky that my kids are a little bit older now 15 and 17 but nonetheless they need me around so when I am around I'm making sure that I'm very present with them but also um, equally so when we work so hard to service everybody you know family and clients it's really important to carve out that time um, so during COVID my biggest blessing I guess was to get a group of friends um, and surprisingly surprising ourselves by going down to the ocean and starting ocean swimming and um, I'm not talking anything serious I'm just talking about you know having fun in the water but oh, just all beautiful. throughout the year and um, and really just trying to regroup myself because if my own energy is not right and my mindset is not right I can't adapt to the changes and be there for my kids our team 
um, or even for me for being progressive with um, where to lead the business with my business partner. Mm. So it's, it really is about finding time and taking that time regularly. So my photos, um, taking photos and going on excursions for that is also really important. Just that inner work as well as always being progressive on trying to be everything to everyone else out there as well. Mm. Yeah. You, you talk about reflection, you yes. know, spending time reflecting, um, doing activities that, you know, new hobbies, whether it's photo taking yeah. or ocean swimming. Is it hard to define the new sense of purpose and how would you proactively express your sense of purpose? I did some work on purpose many years ago, probably going back about 10 years now. And so the purpose statement may have changed a little bit and it probably will continue to change, but really to deliver experiences that, that connect, ignite and motivate people to really give them a sense of community and a belonging and loyalty back to a company or their team has always been my philosophy and something I've always lived by. So um, for me, I always feel inspired about where can we take them? How can we create something very unique for them? Because I love seeing their faces light up and for them to go, oh my gosh, that was the best night ever. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? You know, And that constant feeling of reimagination really sparks us and keeps us excited in this industry and we really love that. Yeah. Um, so it's so varied and being in this industry, you know, 25 years, it's continued to be progressive. Um, so there's something there, I think, for all of us to learn and grow into at all times. Yeah. I, yeah. I just love your passion. Every time I speak to you, your passion speaks for itself. Uh. What does the next 24 months or even just 2024 look like for you? Yeah, well, I think we're at an interesting time. Um, in Australia and I'm sure in many places around the world, you know, we're hearing some fundamental things, you know, still about inclusion for hybrid workforces or the ability to reach so many more people and customers um, and produce a quality brand message and experience and really let yourself shine. Um, I think the hybrid and online, some people say it's going away, it should have gone away and I believe in doing quality experiences so I still feel that to have a blend of in-person and keep Keeping those more sub-regional groups going so that people can afford to reach so many more people with lessening budgets, um, to be inclusive, to change the way we're doing sessions so it's much more of a two-way conversation or you're really gauging that live sentiment from your people in your audience. I think that's really valuable and, um, and I still believe in really amazing incentive programs that take you far and wide and deliver that trip of a lifetime. Yep, like, yeah, like how we've been brought here Absolutely. to Oman. Now oh. tell us, we, we talk a little bit about content relevance how yep. important it is. Uh, a lot of buyers are speaking, are talking about the um, uh, the panel, uh, oh. the women's panel yeah. on the opening night being a great strategy to really anchor perception of a destination like Oman. So what mm. do you think of that, that panel and how has the experience in, in, in Oman been for you? I think Oman Oh my gosh, we've just seen the tip of the iceberg. Uh, for me, it feels very special. I have a real passion for desert locations. Uh, whether, and I'm kind of seeing Oman as the sister city to the Northern Territory. Um, and I just feel that, you know, the authenticity in the people really shines through. And uh, we're getting away from party, party central locations um, through to more connecting beautiful experiences where you really understand the essence of humanity again. And Oman is really shining through. And those ladies just had such passion and they're really standing out and speaking for what they really felt, but bringing that cultural beauty into their message as well. Mm. Yeah, being very proud of where they come from. Yeah, what I really love is actually, you know, to even hear first hand of the direct impact that an incentive planner would have mm. when, by working with the Sade, Sade ladies and yes. uh, it is just fascinating. Yes and uh, and I think that to go to those unique spots whether it be up in the mountains or into those village tribes um, just to experience that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and go away with their product um, or their stories is really special and I think that's what makes a real incentive fabulous is um, the ability to bring in you, those unique people that touch your heart and your mind.